morning. This is Tanya coming on to you with a word from the Lord. I want to thank you right now for all those who have been following. Um, as you know, I am making a change right at this time because uh, Facebook does not work on its live for us with this broadcast. And so we are beginning to broadcast on our own and release videos um, at the time that we have set for it to go live. And so we just want to thank you for transitioning and changing over with us as we do a different take for this time of ministry um, in the month of October. I want to thank each and every one of you for sharing and posting. Today I want to talk to you about Halloween that endorses a spirit of fear. A very important thing to understand when you are in the month of October, as if you can refer, refer back to um, the previous video, speaking on uh, the whole aspect of Halloween, it is vitally important that we understand what we're working with here. Satan does not um, come to give life. The Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And so therefore, in everything that he can put his hands upon, he will make sure that it is destroyed, killed, or um, st stolen from you. And you want to make sure that your children, in this month of October, that they are not stolen, that they are not killed, and they are not stole uh, destroyed and so this is something that each and every parent needs to do for the sake of what they don't or may not understand fully concerning Halloween um, if you think it's just a costume uh, issue then it's not I want you to stay tuned because this is what you're going to begin to understand concerning Halloween which endorses a spirit of fear in just a moment you will see it. If we ever needed a word from the Lord, it is right here and right now. No matter who you are and where you're from, everybody needs a word from the Lord. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence today. We thank you, Lord, that God, you love your people and you do nothing lest you begin to announce through your prophets, to people who can hear you. You begin to, Lord, minister to your people in such a way that they will know that God is truly speaking here. And Lord, pronounce your word today in the name of Jesus. Protect children, families, adults. Lord, who can be abducted, Lord God, by Satan's workers. Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name that you will begin to speak now through this word and this time of prayer. Protect and overcome the darkness with light in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And so I just want to welcome each and every one of you today. Thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure to come and to serve. And this is what we do when I come on, is to serve God's people. You are God's people. You may not be a child of God, but he created you in his image and his likeness. And therefore, you belong to him. You just need to come home to him. Amen. And so I want to just... Um, begin to say um, with our first scripture that you know Satan he wants he wants you to lose the courage that God wants you to keep all the days of your life I want to begin with um, Joshua 1 9 which states this it says have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage do not be afraid or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So the first thing I want to set the stage and in, in all of this by saying that God desires and has always um, made it that man would never have a spirit of fear upon them. That you will walk in courage. That you will have a, a heart that is so, um, like, so much like the lion of the tribe of Judah that you would not have to be concerned who's coming or who's going. 
going. You are always walking and standing in the light of his presence. Then his courage is in that presence. Um, the Bible says in his presence, there's, spirit, there's fullness of joy at his right hand or pleasures forevermore. So there is no fear in the presence of the Lord. And when you belong to God, he does not expect you to walk with the spirit of fear. But today we find that there are many children who walk in fear. They are victimized, they are bullied, they are mistreated, uh, they're called names. And that's how the enemy works through people to bring children under his power. So let me explain something about a spirit of fear. Fear, I used to have fear, so I understand it quite well. Fear cripples you uh, and, and, and uh, dis disables you from doing something or saying something effectively, okay? What it does before any spirit can take a hold of you, um, the spirit of fear is the first one to come upon you and seize you. What it does, it's a seizing spirit. It it it, it grabs you and, and, and paralyzes you so that any other spirit that wants to attack you can do so. Okay. So it's like a rope. It's like a restraining, um, material, but it's not material. It's spirit. It's a restraining spirit. And it's, it's, it's like, you know, it, what it does is there to bind you so that whatever spirit wants to attack you, whether it's suicide, depression, oppression, um, murder, whatever it is that, um, that if you may have tendencies in those areas, weaknesses in those areas, then that spirit will come upon you and begin to um, enlighten you to to or to do those things, whether it's to take your life or to steal or to whatever, kill. Whatever the devil does, he wants you to do. And so this is how um, it begins, though. How, this month, and I said, if you go back and refer to my video, you'll hear these things, but I tried to bring some in because so that you understand context. Why am I speaking and praying the way that I do? Because I have also information on the calendar, the satanic calendar, which this month of October is a very... Um, special month for Satan himself because this is the month of the dead. It's the worship of the dead. It is also Satan's birthday. It is his day where he is worshipped. He um, Sacrifices are made starting from the 13th um, to all the way down to the 28th, I believe, um, or 29th. And this is what happens in this month they begin to abduct children, adults, um, animals. Um, they take them and they are in a holding place for the time of sacrifice that they would make even during the end, at the end of the month. Coming up on the 31st, the sacrifices, I believe, begin either the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, um, or the 30th. Those days are where those sacrifices are made to Satan himself. And he begins to now, um, you know, that's how people get power. People even in the industries that want power. That's how they get it. They become used in those times. People die and people are given over in sacrifices to worship the devil. And as a result of that, he empowers them with demon spirits that come inside of them. This is some deep stuff, but I'm just telling you that this is what you need to, um, to hear at this time because you don't realize that there is a world, an underworld of darkness that has come upon the earth. And this world wants to take over the earth and rule the earth and cause you to be a slave of the earth. And Satan begins with children because they're easily formed. Adult has already been formed. And so there's much more resistance when he tells them to do something. But a child is not going to be as resistant. They're just going to obey. Most children obey unless they know the truth and they will resist the devil and he will have to flee. And so 
let's go into, I want to encourage you today, if you're a parent and you have children that you take out for Halloween on the 31st of every year, the month of October, you need to now make a shift this year. I am pro proclaiming to you these things so you would understand how Satan is slowly inundating the mind of your child even schools that put on these shows for kids and they are just continually running these programs of fear where kids go into haunted houses and haunted tents and they make this whole big thing a dark adventure but what it does it opens up the child for a spirit of fear to come up upon their lives and even in doing the the things that they need to do for their future their career for their, what they want to accomplish in life, fear comes upon them and they're not able to go forward. They're stunted in their abilities, their capabilities, because the spirit of fear is upon them. But let's go into Psalm 23, 4. And so we reminded what God says in Joshua. Let me just read that again. Have I not commanded you? He commands you to be strong because he knows the world that we live in is trying to wear us down and make us weak. He says, be strong and of good courage. Even though you know and you're hearing these things, what I'm saying today, be strong and of good courage. Don't let the enemy cause you to be afraid. He says, do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I want to just encourage you as we are on our way that you now take the Lord with you. Accept who he is. He is over the earth. He made the earth. So he is not, um, can't be inspired by anything. The devil doesn't have anything over God. God made Satan before Satan became Satan. He made Lucifer, which was his former name, meaning light. And um, th that is, you know, he, he became evil when he went against God. And he still has some power, but he is not all powerful. Jesus defeated him at the cross. And that's why I can come in the name of Jesus and speak to him and speak on behalf of every uh, soul who doesn't know Christ or those who feel victim to the enemy. I can speak on their behalf and I can set captives free because of Jesus Christ living in me. Now, let's move on to Psalm 23. Psalm 23 says this, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen? This is something that every person needs to know who have a spirit of fear. Satan, his goal is to keep you in fear. And if you're listening to this today and you have a spirit of fear, it's time for you to let go of that spirit because that spirit is real. The Bible says that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So to see how God sees all of these things before you were born, he had this stuff written in the word and he begin, so that it can be proclaimed to you that he didn't give you that spirit. It's the devil that gives that spirit. That spirit does not come from God. It comes from the underworld because the underworld is crippled with fear. They, the reason why Satan puts fear on you is because that's what's inside of him. He wants to make you a child of fear. He wants to make your child a child of fear. He wants your child to go about and feel like they could never do anything because they're too afraid. But I come against that in Jesus name because today he says, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it May, those are shadows that the enemy put on you so that you can go, become so um, uh, intrinsically um, vulnerable. And then he comes in and he plants that spirit of fear in you so that you will never be able to rise up. But that is, we, we're blocking that today from off of your child, from off of you. If you have that spirit functioning in such a way in your life, then in Jesus' name, I command it to be broken from your life today, that you will rise up. And he says, though you walk through that valley, maybe you've been walking through a valley of fear, 
for a long time and it seemed like you're gonna die because the shadows of death has come over you you feel like you even want to take your life but I come against that spirit in the name of Jesus and I declare today that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper amen I want to just continue with Psalm 23 4 where it says God God will protect you and he will even though the enemy tries to bring you into the valley the Lord says he will be with you and know this that every valley has another side you come in from one side and you are down in that valley but there's another side and it's the Lord that meets you in the valley of the shadow of death where there's suicide situations that is deathly you feel vulnerable God is with you in the valley and that's what makes him the great shepherd is that he'll come down in the valley to find his sheep he will come down to where you are and and be next to you and bring you out through the storm, through the situation of struggle, and he will make sure that you overcome. This is something that you need to know today. Let's go to first um, the Psalm 34, verse 4, uh, because as you're in that valley, there needs to be something that you do that makes God come to you. And that's what uh, ministers to us um, here. It says in Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Your valley could be anything today it could be your job situation um the, you know the enemy in the month of october his goal is to bring a spirit of fear over nations over your um your family over anything that could cause you to be fearful he wants you that much more afraid and so it is important that you remember that you can call on the lord in those moments whether you're in the valley of um you know despair today maybe you are grieving today maybe today you're so discouraged you want to take your life but i come against that spirit of fear i come against that spirit of uh death and that's where the valley says though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says I will fear no evil. Don't fear any evil because what? God is with you. But you have to, in order for God to come, you have to seek him. He says, he says I sought the Lord. What do you mean? I searched for him. I cried out to him. He heard my cry. He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those right now who have a spirit of fear. They're in the valley and they don't know what to do. Yes, when we don't know what to do, our eyes are on you, Lord. We're seeking you and crying out to you. And we're saying, Lord, help those who need to be broken free from a spirit of fear, from a, from death in the valley, in Jesus' name. Maybe th things have come upon you because someone has spoken negative words or cursed you. In Jesus' name, I break that curse in the na mighty name of Jesus and that you are released today and that God is with you. You are not alone, but the Lord God has delivered you because he sets the captives free. And when you look to him and you cry out for mercy, he is faithful. Amen. And so cry out to Jesus. It doesn't matter where you are, what situation you're in. If you are a child listening to this video today, cry out to Jesus. Just say the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus, save me. Or just Jesus. If that's all you could come out of your mouth. If you can't say it because you're paralyzed by fear, think it. Because the Lord can hear your thoughts right? And so that is another strategy that I'm giving to kids today is to say the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to Psalm 56 verse three and four, three to four. Amen. These are all such comforting, um, scriptures, but it also pierces the darkness that would try to come against us. Um, in this month of October, Satan wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And his goal is to bring the spirit of fear and seize nations quickly because he knows his time is winding down. But let's read uh, Psalm 56, verse 3 and 4. 
Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Amen. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? I don't know what threatening circumstances may be coming against you, but he says, when I am afraid, the psalmist knew that there were tormentors that could even uh, aff afflict others. Um, and, you know, Satan is a tormentor, a destroyer, a murderer, a liar, a thief, all those things which God is not. He is. And he says, he's, he, but the psalmist reminds us that whenever I'm afraid, whenever you're afraid, okay, trust in him, trust in God, trust in him, in God, put your trust and don't fear because what can flesh do to you? Is it your boss? Is it your a, a next door neighbor that's causing you torment? Is it someone who is um, hiding out and doing something to you and making phone calls to you and threatening you? God will protect you. Begin to call upon the Lord now. This is where the power of God will begin to manifest over your life in your situation. And you will begin to see that Lord God really does care for you, your family, um, whatever it is that you need. He says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. It's important that you don't also call on him just for a moment, but you call on him to receive his son, Jesus. Jesus makes the difference. If you, you cannot have God without Jesus, because Jesus came into the earth as a human being. And he is the bridge that gets us over to God. God is on the other side, but he bridges the gap from earth to heaven with his life. And when he died upon that cross, he gave us access to call upon the Lord. But don't just use God for a moment in time and leave him after you have found your peace. But you need to keep him because let me tell you, around the corner, there's going to be trouble again because the devil knows that's how you function. And so he can attack you again, knowing that you have not taken Jesus seriously. He will come back and he will try to own you. And so that's how he is. That's how he functions. But we have to now look to the Lord because Satan saturates atmospheres with terror and all kinds of fear. He, 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 his goal is to overtake territories with fear so that he can control and own. And so movie theaters is one of his platforms where he runs these movies. And many of these movie makers are Satanists. I'm not saying all of them are, but some of them who produce, they input things in movies and they approve these movies because they want the kingdom of darkness to be propagated in the earth because Satan is, high, is a hiding owner. He stole the earth from human beings that was given to us in Genesis. And God now has to now raise us up and take back the territory with righteousness. And so movies, cities, even the news propagate fear. You just watch enough to know what's going on, but don't let it permeate your thoughts. Your mental capacity should be liberated from any form of spirit of fear. Because fear paralyzes and it causes you to be incapable of moving forward effectively. Amen. So I pray that the Lord will give you grace today so that you can overcome whatever fears the enemy is trying to throw at you. Okay, let's go into Psalm 27. And this is truly a beautiful Psalm. I really enjoy this is to enlighten your heart. God, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Psalm 27, one, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And so the Lord is really encouraging us through the psalmist and helping us to understand that there is nothing that you need to be afraid of, that whatever it is that you are trying to 
attain and you know whatever your endeavors are and it seems like it's at, at such a distance and you can't get to it because you feel fearful to go ahead and do what you're supposed to do you're fearful to make a move you're fearful to even give an opportunity to the situation so that you can actually know if you are qualified for that job qualified to own that company qualified to to raise that child qualified to purchase that home Home. whatever situation you find yourself in I want you to know that the Lord is your light and your salvation it's not just spiritual salvation but God wants to help you when Jesus came to the earth the first thing he did he did he didn't say I am your savior he came and he he set captives free from the bondage he started to feed people who could not eat they didn't have food. He started to raise the dead. Those who, that widow, I think of the widow whose son had died and she was by herself, husband gone, son now gone. And who's going to help her? And so the, the Lord Jesus touched the casket and that, that young man got up from that, that dead state. And he became a living testimony as to what God is able to do in the midst of a deathly situation. Are you in a deathly situation right now? Because the Lord is your light and your salvation. He will save you. Let John Ramirez testify to you. If you go and search him out, he was an ex Satanist and he will tell you that Jesus came in hell. Satan, he was down in hell with Satan. Satan was about to destroy him because why? Because he was as a Satanist, he ended up going to a church service because of his girlfriend. And as a result, he was going to respond to the altar call. The preacher was preaching and his heart was touched and he was responding to the call and Satan interjected and was about to take him down and in the process, brought him down into hell and was going to torture him. And Jesus came down and planted a cross there. And there it was where John Ramirez gave his heart to Jesus Christ. He now is an ex Satanist and is an evangelist going all about talking about Jesus because he has overcome the darkness and he knows about it. Check him out on YouTube. You will find it. But I'll tell you this, that if you are going to fight your battles this month in October, if you're going to take a stand for your house, your children, their lives, don't perpetuate the darkness. Don't perpetuate a spirit of fear over their lives. They will not be able to move forward as adults. They will be so seized by their own internal um, building of this uh, scenario of fear that they will not be able to function properly. Do you want your, the, your legacy to function like that? Because your children, they are your legacy. They are, um, when you and I have, have left this earth, our children will be the inheritance that the earth receives and they will either be courageous or they will be victims to the devil himself. And so I declare to you today that God's love is winning your heart right now. He is winning your heart. Some of you are listening to what I'm saying and you're listening well. Because you understand that there's some truth to that. You see fears in your children. They don't even want to do certain things. And so on top of that, Halloween really imposes a spirit of fear. It endorses that spirit over your child's life. And I speak today courage into your heart that you will remember these words when it's time to look your child in the eyes and say, listen, we're going to do Halloween differently this year. We're going to take the time and thank God for our family. We're going to take a time and have dinner together and we're going to um, acknowledge God instead of acknowledging the darkness. We're going to look um, together in God's word and we're going to read the life that God wants to give to us as a family and that we would overcome any fears, any doubts any trepidations, any spirit of suicide, any death thinking that we're going to cast it out of our house today in Jesus name. See, that's where God comes in and he makes all the difference because the spirit of fear has no right to be in your house, your child, in you. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. God is able to take you out today 
and deliver you. In Jesus' name, be set free. Isaiah 41.10. Um, I want to just uh, end with this particular verse. Hallelujah. Hope, the, hope you are um, receiving something from this at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 41.10. It says, but you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up that I may repay them. Mm. That's really interesting because, you know, there's always a day of vindication. There's always a day um, the, the Lord says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And this is what the, the psalmist is saying. Raise me up. Mm. And God is raising up his body. He's raising up his church to overcome the darkness because we're children of light and you can be a child of light today. God is giving you an opportunity through this message to know, number one, you can begin to, um, you can come into the kingdom of God. You can be part of what God is doing in the earth today. It's not just being delivered from him and walking away and say, oh yeah, thank you. Thanks. You know, but no, you want to become a child of God. You want to become someone who is called by the name, you know, where, where you, you know that you belong to God. That's why you're called child, children of God, child of God is that you have connection with heaven and, and, and you're no longer a citizen of this earth. You become a citizen of heaven and, and God, you move by what God says, not by what the world says. Amen. And so I want to just welcome you and, and, and just, um, give you the invitation, even as I, um, you know, begin to just minister to you in prayer. It says, but you, O Lord, be merciful to me. The Psalmist wants God to be merciful. And when we, you know, the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we now have to ask God for his mercy to cleanse our sin because our sin overtakes us in many ways. The way we perceive life, the way we perceive death, death is not, um, it's only a door to the Christian. We walk from this realm into the eternal realm with God and where God is, there's liberty, there's life, there's love, there's overwhelming joy that is there. And God is looking to you today. And he is saying, do you want want to repay the enemy. You want to be raised up. How God raises you up is by giving you his eternal life and he takes your sin and he causes your sin from as far to be far from you. As far as the East is from the West, so shall I separate your sin from you. The Lord says in his word. And so he wants to forgive you. That's what forgiveness does is separate sin from you. And the way, the things that you would want to do in your, in, when you had the sin living in your life, you no longer want to do it because the spirit, this Holy Spirit of God comes into your heart and helps you to obey God. He helps you to do what is right and pleasing in the eyes of the father. And you will repay the enemy because you will now live for God. See that Satan wanted you to live for him. He wanted your kids. He wanted your spouse. He wanted you to be completely down and out. But God stepped in right on time today so that you could hear this message and that you could turn to him and give your life over to the living God. He loves you. He really does. And I want to say to you that this is your moment. This is your time. God is giving you an opportunity to do what you've never done. Maybe you've thought about Jesus, but you never truly made a commitment to him. You never gave him a chance, but now this is your chance. This is your opportunity so that you can do what God has intended for your life to do in the earth, that your latter reign of your life would be greater than the former reign of it. And so I want to invite you to receive Christ right now. And I want to pray for those who have a spirit of fear. Um, I want to invite you first and then I will break, begin to pray for all those who um, carry that spirit of fear. Your children have it. And so um, I want to invite you to just say yes to the Lord. To say, yes, Lord, I, I want to receive you. I want to be forgiven and I want to be set free. I want to be a child of God. I want to be free. I don't want to live uh, as a victim in the earth, I want to be completely um, 
surrounded by your presence. And the Lord gives you that opportunity today. He gives you that love today, that sweetness today. That's the spirit of God making you feel that. And so I just want to um, pray for you to come to Christ today. In this month of October, we will not endorse the spirit of fear, but we will give, we will offer you the, the love that comes from God. Is He is lovely and all beautiful. There's not a moment that he doesn't display that love to the earth. And we just have to have our eyes open to see and I sense and feel his love. May you feel his presence right now. In the name of Jesus, I just declare his love all over you and that he's drawing you. He's giving you his power to stand against the wiles of the evil one. And I just ask that you pray with me verbally the Lord, he says, if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And so let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died for each and every one of us. Thank you for acknowledging me today, for recognizing who I am and what I could be. And I stand before you today, Jesus asking for your forgiveness that you would cleanse my heart from sin come into my heart lord change my life i believe that you are the son of god and that you paid the price that i would be saved i would be forgiven lord jesus i accept your eternal life today i accept your righteousness and I receive your love. Thank you, Lord, for making me a child of God. Show me how to live for you. Show me how to walk with you and save my house in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. He loves you. Yes, he does. He does. And all of heaven rejoices with you today. Because the Lord, I could hear the Father saying, another one has come into my kingdom because of the shed blood of my son on the cross. He not only died, but he was raised to life to let you know that you too, on that great day, you will rise again. If you are to um, die he, and you leave your body here, he will come and you will raise up that body and you'll receive a new body. And those who are here and alive and remain will be caught up with him in the air when the trump sounds. That's what the power of the resurrection does for the child of God. It is life forevermore. And so I want to pray against a spirit of fear. We bind every spirit of fear that has been causing your life and blinding your life from the light of God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that he will put his hand upon your heart, your children, your grandchildren, your father, your mother, that uncle, that, that husband in the name of Jesus, that you will receive his uh, deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. As I stretch my hand, I just feel the presence of God so strong today. And I just pray that God would just set you free in Jesus name, that your mind would be free from fear. I cast out that spirit of fear from off of you right now in the name of Jesus. He leaves. There he is. There he is. He goes. That spirit of fear does not belong in you upon you. It, it will not torment you anymore. I close that door. Let the spirit of love now manifest in your in your heart in your being right now. Let Lord just pour out the oil of gladness and that the spirit of love, yes, a sound mind, hallelujah, a power be upon your life in Jesus' name. And God sets you free. He sets you free from all fears. In the name of Jesus, I called upon the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears, the psalmist said. And so, Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for the grace.
that you are pouring out upon your people right now. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray for courage, Lord God. Yes, haven't I command you? Be courageous. Hallelujah. Be strong and of good courage, the Lord says. Be not afraid, for the Lord God goes with you wherever you go. And so, Lord, I just, just release that peace over your sons and your daughters today in the mighty name of Jesus, that the power of love will be felt, will be experienced today in Jesus' name, in your life in your heart that you'll have peace. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world does. Be not afraid, be not, he says, I am with you, says the Lord, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you give that peace and you give it strong today. Lord God, the world cannot accomplish what has just been done in just these moments. You have completely done a turnaround with your people in Jesus name. And I thank you for that love. I thank you for that expression through your Holy Spirit, touching them and letting them feel that love in their homes, in their cars, wherever you are right now, experience that oozing love, hallelujah, waves of love coming to you today in the mighty name of Jesus, waves of love, waves of love, waves of love in the name of Jesus. Receive that love, hallelujah. Receive his blessing, receive his blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive his blessing. Yes, yes, we, he sheds off that, that shell, that outer shell of fear. Let it just, it just cracks and falls away right now and oozing into you right now, waves of the love of the Father. Yes, some of you feel like, you know, you felt like at one time that God didn't love you. I just, and just, we, we, we reinforced his love in your heart today. Hallelujah. We reinforce that love today in Jesus name. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, of a sound mind. Mm, take it right now. Just receive his love. He loves you. He loves you. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you today also to make some decisions on behalf of Halloween. Don't let that perpetual generational, it is a curse to, to keep Halloween as an icon in your family. Because what it does, it perpetuates the learning of the darkness. And, and that darkness increases more and more year by year. So let Satan doesn't mind taking his time to train your children to love the darkness, magic, Ouija boards, uh, parties that celebrate the dead. Um, but I want you to now uh, make a shift and, and you resist the temptation of falling into the trap of going year after year to celebrate Halloween. This is not the will of God for your life. God wants you to walk in his uh, victory, in his peace, in his uh, love, uh, and that fear will be broken finally from your home, your life, and anybody else who comes in contact with this broadcast. I want to say thank you, Lord, for your kindness to your people today. And I pray blessing over you. I ask that you kindly share this live. Uh, with you, put it on your platform, copy the link, put it on whatever um, your, your timeline, put it in Messenger, uh, share it with as many as possible before this month comes where people will begin to go out um, and do their trick or treating and all of that. I uh, pray that they will become aware of such things. God bless you. This has been Tanya coming to you with a word from the Lord. Halloween endorses a spirit of fear. Please, until next time, thank you so much for your support. Bye-bye now.